Nowadays, we are using AI to help us develop our applications. But the problem is AI is separate from our code. It can answer some questions, but it never does it on a good level. Here we will use Ornco, which is a TypeScript backend framework, together with Corso to improve this process. And the sponsor of this video is Encore. And you already know that inside Node.js we can use TypeScript, like for example with Express, to make it type safe. And we can use AI like ChatGPT. But what if we can merge it together in something better? As you can see here, Encore is an open source TypeScript backend framework for the robust type safe applications. And its main benefit is to get AI support accurately based on the framework itself. This is the first framework that I know which has AI support inside. So you can use both Copilot or Corsa together with Encore to get these benefits. And additionally to that, it is much faster than Express and obviously type safe. And additionally to that, we are getting auto-generated UI where we can test all our routes and an easy way to deploy our UI to production. And our first step here is to install it on our machine. On macOS, you can execute brew install Encore. After installation, I want to create an account on their website. It is not mandatory, but then it will generate an application in the cloud and allows us to push our changes to production. This is why we must try it in the console Encore auth login. And after hitting enter, we will open the browser page. Here we must click allow access and we successfully logged in. Now let's create our first application. For this, we must try it on core app create. And here we must select a language. I'm going with TypeScript. And here we can select a template of the project. I want to go with hello world template. The app name, let's go with the API. And now it installs all dependencies. As you can see here, it successfully created a project. And here we can see an app ID. It is important because now I can jump in my cloud and see my API application here. So I can click on it and see lots of information and deploy it later. But now we just want to run our application locally. This is why I'm hitting yes. And what we're getting in browser is a nice UI, which we're getting for free. And it is auto-generated based on our code. As you can see here, we're getting an explorer similar to Postman, but we don't really need to type something because here we're getting all URLs from our application. Like we have an API with slash hello slash and here will be some name, for example foo. I'm hitting call API and we're getting a response message hello foo. Now let's look on the code. The first thing that we want to do is to add LLM instructions for Copilot or Cursor. This is why in the root I will create a new file .cursor rules. And from GitHub repository you can copy the content of this file LLM instructions. I am pasting them here. And now Cursor knows everything about this framework. Now let's look on the structure of our project. Here we have just a single hello folder and inside three files. Most importantly, we have Encore Service TS, and inside just a single line, export default new service hello. What it does, it registers hello as a new service, which basically means all files inside this folder will be treated as part of this hello service. Now here is hello TS. This is exactly where we are defining our routes. And we're defining them by using an API function where inside we're providing as a first argument our parameters like method get and path and secondly is a callback what will be executed. Additionally here we have a possibility with expose true or false expose our API publicly or not. And obviously it is all covered with TypeScript like for example we're getting promise response back with message string. Encore reads this code and generates, based on it, this UI. But let's just say we don't know anything about Encore. We want to create an API for users with email, username, password, and the database for that. So let's ask AI for this. So I ask it to create a user service with email, name, password. Password must be hashed. And we need a method to create a user. I also need a Postgres database for this. And I want to use Next.js as an ORM. And just look how good AI works here with this framework. Because all these LLM rules that we paste in the root helps it to answer correctly. 
So what do we need to do? Let's first create a user service with the database, then add the user creation endpoint and password hashing. First of all, we need a file inside users and core user service. You already know about that. Let's click apply here. So here is our new service users. Let's hit yes. Then inside users, we have a file db with SQL database connection. So basically, as you can see, we have a database connection for every single service. And this is really great because it allows you to have a monolith project in a single folder and then every single folder can be completely isolated piece of API or even project. So let's click here apply and this is our dbts, looks great. And we need here a migration. So again, let's click apply, but I don't really like this password hash. I want password, so let's change it to that and create that current timestamp. And now here the last file is users use it, yes. Let's apply it here and check what is inside. So first of all, we have connects connection. Then we have two interfaces to create a user, email name, password, and our user, which is already saved user. So id email name created at, which is date. Let's apply this and change a little bit. So instead of password hash, I want password. But other than that, it looks fine. So what we have here is a create endpoint method post on slash users. And what we're doing here is first of all, we're hashing our password and then we're inserting the user in our database. Now let's scroll a little bit. As you can see, we must install these dependencies. So let's click apply to add bcrypt and connects and run npm install. Now let's restart our project by calling and call run, which will start it again. And as you can see here, we're getting an error that we need a Postgres package. This is totally right. Let's install it additionally here. But now we have an extremely important question. How will it work at all when we didn't set up our database? And here we can see that we have DB connection string, but it didn't ask us to set up something. The main point is that you must have Docker installed on your machine. And then when you are calling and core run, it will pull a Docker image and use it directly. As you can see here in my Docker desktop, this Postgres image was downloaded exactly for our project. And the magical part, we didn't even notice that. We simply started our project and it is running. Now in our UI, we are getting not just hello get, but we have users create function. And we're getting here nice autocomplete that we have email, name, and password. So let's provide here foo at gmail.com, name foo, and password from one to eight. As you can see here, we successfully created a user in the database. If we want to see more information about our request, we can click here traces on the right and see details like request, response, and logs from the server. Now let's ask AI to implement all missing functions. So we want AI to generate update, delete, get list, and get single user functions for user service. As you can see, it was generated, so let's apply it and check the changes. First of all, here is an interface to update the user, so everything is typed. Now we have a get function, which gets the specific user. We have a list function to get the list of the users, then update function and delete function. So this looks fine, let's click accept. But when we try to run our server again, we're getting an error. So let's just copy it and ask AI if it can help. So it says that we need a named interface and not a union. So let's apply changes now. As you can see, AI successfully fixed our problem. So let's look in browser. We have here a list of all our requests, like for example, users list. I can call here and we see our user. Get user by ID, for example, users one. We're getting our user back or deleting our user. Let's provide here our ID one, call API, and our user was deleted. So far we use just API Explorer, but we can click on service catalog, which gets a nice list of all functions that we have. And we can click on specific function and get completely typed request and response. So we're always type safe. Now we can commit our changes and push to Encore. So git add all files and git commit, for example, first commit. After this, it is enough to just write git push encore and it will trigger deployment. So inside cloud, we see our deployment and it is running. So we can click on it and see the logs, how it is building our project. And after this, it will deploy directly to AWS. 
As you can see in logs, here is our deployment, which is running right now. Now our deployment was successful, and on the left we can jump to our service catalog. You can already see here all our routes that we created, but here on the top you can select an environment, in our case it's staging, and here you can select the specific route that you want to test. Like for example users, and then you see just users routes. So we can click on create, we know what to pass here, so let's create a user and check if it is working. So here is foo at gmail.com, our name foo and the password. I'm hitting call API, and as you can see our user was successfully created in the deployed database. So we used Encore together with AI to create and deploy really fast an application which is fully type safe, scalable and easy to support. And if you want to learn more about Onco, check their website onco.dev or click a link in the description box below.